System. Three knockdown rule is in effect. The bell cannot save a fighter except in the last round. As you look at the average punches per round in the first fight, the punching was at a more furious pace than the average lightweight fight. It was incredible. And here we go, round one. It is scheduled for 15. This is for the IBF Cruiserweight Championship. Evander Holyfield in the black trunks with the blue trim. Dwight Muhammad Kawi in the white trunks with the black trim. Holyfield 16-0 with 12 knockouts has found a way to erase the bitter memory of being disqualified in the semifinals of the 84 Olympics on that controversial call and was forced to settle for the bronze medal. Kawi 28-4-1 with 17 knockouts, rated number one by the WBA, number three according to the IBF. A two-time former world champ who says he has only one goal to regain the title from Evander Holyfield. Well, he certainly started out that way. He threw a few home run, uh, long, looping hooks. They landed glancingly off of uh, Holyfield's shoulder and gloves. Did no damage, but certainly were frightening-looking punches. Holyfield has defended the WBA Junior Heavyweight title a couple of times against Henry Tillman and Asi Ocasio. Has defended his IBF Cruiserweight title once versus Ocasio. All told three title defenses. And this is his first fight after beating Kawi in his first fight. He KO'd Michael Brothers in the third round in Paris, but it was not a title fight. Kawi's last fight, August the 15th in San Tropez. The sixth round KO over Leroy. Murphy on that same card, Holyfield defended by beating Ocasio. Good counterpunch by Holyfield right now. It's both been doing, taking up on round 16. This is just a continuation of what they did before, a little slower than they had before. Holyfield's got more experience now. He's pacing himself, moving, giving him angles, not standing still as he did in that first fight, willing to exchange blows. This time he's boxing a little bit more cleverly. He is giving him the difficult angle, so taking away that long looping hook of Dwight Kawis. Combination by Holyfield. We showed you that graphic before. The average number of punches in the first fight. Look perhaps for fewer punches from Holyfield, but a better connection percentage tonight. More efficiency in the first fight. Over 2,300 punches combined. There's a left jab. As Holyfield doubles up without having that much impact. White always difficult to hit. He just gets down in that crotch and it just looks like you got him and you don't. It's, it's like Ali said about Frazier. Boy, it looks like his head is there, but it's not there when you go punch. A fire plug, a squat walking banger. And he loves to pound the body and has tremendous head movement. We head for the bell. Evander Holyfield into his corner with Lou Duba and George Benton. That's your follow one. That's your play. All that overhand stuff. Just bow, bow into it. Bow in and away from that overhand stuff, right? And just keep doing just what you're doing. Give me the bucket. Where's that bucket, George? You got to bring that up. The blue one. All right, now listen. Yeah, right here. Now don't change it. Don't change it because there's nothing you can do about what you're doing. You understand? Mm -hmm. All right. Now listen, every now and then when you're getting a jab off, you're getting a jab off, try to speak it real fast with the right hand behind the jab. Set it up good, right? So you catch him in the duck. You know what I mean? And we'll check the first round copy punch statistics. And it favors Holyfield by a whopping margin. But it wasn't by a whopping margin that he won that round, but by a very close margin. He won that first round, did Holyfield unofficially, let us say, throughout this bout, because one never knows till the fight's over with. In my opinion, it was a close round. Remember that uh, Kawi is doing the leading. 
he is doing the uh, moving forward. He is carrying the fight and bringing the fight to Holyfield. That's worth points. Holyfield's brilliant defense thus far earns him points. And the heavier punches and more accurate punches were landed by Holyfield. He is evading that long looping hook as Georgie Benton told him, leaning in and with motion. Keep doing what you're doing. That's the way that Georgie Benton put it succinctly. Round two, scheduled for 15. Evander Holyfield, 100% business in the ring. His big weapon, the big right jab, not a showboat. Kawi shows a little more flash, but not really a bully in the ring. Holyfield likes to rely on his quickness more than anything else. Very fast for a big man. Surprising thing here is that Kawi did not uh, take up the uh, prescription from that last fight and go right to the body and pound the sides. He's been trying to land that long looping uh, punch, which Holyfield stepping down and stepping into it is a void. It, it, just watch how many times he throws that overhand right hand and has not yet to figure that he's got to go to the body with it. And Holyfield likes to fight the outside, step in with a combination, then move away if he has his way. When you see a very tall man and a very short man fight, the most intelligent thing that a short man can do is jab to the body. He's just started to pick on that. He's been doing it three, four, five times. You can step in, jab to the body, and cover up before the other guy gets a punch off. It's the only way he can jab with Holyfield. And Ferdy Kawi sort of dares you by sticking the chin out. He's tough. I mean, he almost says, there's nothing you can do to me to hurt me. So go ahead and throw whatever you got. Here's my chin. And that's discouraging. Loves to throw hooks, has a solid right, but now Holyfield pressing the attack. He's got Kawi against the ropes. But he's not even in a remote small amount of trouble. It's just a little tempest in a teapot. Successfully dodged all the bullets. He's back on the attack, backing up Holyfield. A short-lived flurry that got a rise from the crowd. When you have two guys of uh, this equal caliber and they start getting off bombs, the crowd gets right into this fight. Holyfield, the first of the Olympic class of 84 to win a professional world title. Kawi, meanwhile, turned pro at 25. No amateur experience. Took him just three and a half years to capture the title. Of course, he got his experience. Railway State Prison, where he served five and a half years. Here is Holyfield. Again on the attack is round two in. And they continue to go at it after the bell. And the referee, Randy Nova, has to step between. And that's what you need a big referee for. Randy is a good heavyweight. He stepped right in between, took control. Excellent work by the referee, Randy Newman. You don't need that again, right? Now, word of warning to each corner. Hey, behave yourselves. you got plenty of time for three minutes to fight. Don't be fighting in that minute in between. All right. Watch this end of the round action. When the blood is up and the punches are flying, you sometimes don't hear that bell. Needless to say, we don't need that again, were the words of referee Randy Newman in the corner of Kawi. Look at the way, the size of Randy Newman, his ability to control these big men. That's what you need in a referee. Let's go. Come on. Randy Newman, who once fought Jerry Quarry and lost on a cut, that may have been his biggest encounter to this point as you look at the CompuPunch stats. Again, Holyfield with the edge there, but now, welcome to the second war between these two guys. Absolutely. First round was feeling out kind of thing, and second war, round was war was declared. And we're back to where we were before. Picking up where they left off, indeed. Round three, scheduled for 15. The IBF Cruiserweight title, the champion of the Black Trunks, Evander Holyfield, and looking to get it back to the man of the way, Dwight Muhammad Kawi. Are we willing to give up these rounds if he inflicts the punishment that he needs to to slow down Holyfield for the later rounds when Kawi is brutal? Ferdy, do you sense a genuine dislike between these two fellows? Well, I think that's uh, in the character of the fight. It's a one-way street. Uh, Dwight comes from the tough, tough University of Rahway State Penitentiary. You don't learn to love your fellow man in there. And when he came out, he brought that toughness with him. Holyfield's one of these athletes. He leaves it all out. There's, uh, 
the difference is one man hates the other and the other guy could care less. He's there to box. Now we learned his fighting in the streets of Camden and then Rahway State Prison in the gym, a product of a broken home. Boy, when Holyfield triggers off a counterpunch, and here comes Kawi back. Kawi with a combination to the head of Holyfield. The Camden buzzsaw. He's got his supporters here in Atlantic City. When Holyfield triggers off a punch, it's short and sweet. Now Holyfield with Kawi in the corner. Kawi comes away smiling. There was a heavy right, a solid right by Holyfield to the top of Kawi's head. Oh, what a tough man is Dwight Kawi. He takes those punches, he smiles, he comes back, he knows all he needs is one good shot to make Holyfield feel it. A bruising affair here, round three. The general perception is that Kawi's been around forever, but he got such a late start. 25 years of age, he's been around for nine years. Well, he was fighting with some very competent boxers in Rahway when they say he had no amateur careers. When you fight with James Scott every day, you get a university education. A short, crisp combination by Holyfield that landed. Now he comes battling back. Final seconds, round three. Now we getting his punches in just like he wants. Get a smile from Kawi, and the crowd loves it. Keep it going just like that. Keep it Here's outside. Holyfield's corner. When you get close, punch in combination, right? Fourth round. You're boxing beautiful. Right. Be beautiful. Right. Now give me that good left hand. Keep that good left hand going. Now when you get close to him, look. When he's down, when you see him down, bobbing and weaving, bobbing and weaving, you can't see the, you can't see the uppercut. You hit it, reach around and hit him here on the kidney, right? But come back with the left uppercut, right? But punch and threes, punch and threes and fours, punch and threes and fours, you got me covered? Fury is flurry by Dwight Muhammad Kawi in that third round. I think this is the best round he had thus far. He got Holyfield to commit to those little wars that he likes, those little trenches, and he took the round as far as I was concerned. Now the score unofficially is 29-28, a very close fight between these two excellent gladiators. The numbers reflect what... The punches were in round three, an even round in which Dwight Kawi got Holyfield to commit to a fight in the trenches, where Kawi is the best. Round four, scheduled for 15, the IBF Cruiserweight Championship here on Showtime. The pace has been wild, just as in the first fight. Holyfield going back into his boxing bag. A little movement, showing the angles, jabbing. Knowing that Dwight Howie can only get frustrated with this kind of fighting. It's not his style. He doesn't want to fight this way. Holyfield. To the body and the head of Kawi. Some vicious punches being thrown. Holyfield with an expression of anger on his face. That right, a glancing blow by Kawi, no effect. He just keeps throwing that big looping right hand. One wonders what's going to happen if it ever lands flush. Because at this early part of this fight, he's, he's putting everything he's got in us. That's a home run swing that he's got there. In the first encounter, Kawi scored early and often with bruising body shots, you may recall. Wild miss there by Kawi. Holyfield survived the early barrage. Fox wisely came on strong from the sixth round on, dominating the later rounds. In that fight, Holyfield ran out again. Oh! Kawi is down! That was a good, sharp hook. I don't think that Dwight is hurt as much as he was just crouching down when he got hit. It doesn't look like he's hurt. A flash knockdown, round four, for Evander Holyfield. Certainly enough time left for Evander to put some hurt on him. Under a minute left to go. Now 
Kawi trying to storm back. the doctor right in the face, shook his head, and that was the end of that. Holyfield in a knockout at 2 minutes and 30 seconds on the fourth round. Evander Holyfield defends his IBF Cruiserweight Championship here in the fourth round. 2.30 the time. The second time, Kawi went down, he couldn't get up. So Evander, real deal Holyfield, is now 17-0 with 13 knockouts. We'll take a look at the first knockdown in round four. This one sent Kawi reeling to the seat of his pants. He got up quickly. And then to the second knockdown, the one that put Kawi away. Just when it looked as if Kawi might be coming back from the first knockdown, boom, down he goes again. We'll take a look from another angle of that second and final knockdown by Evander Holyfield. The enormous power behind those punches. And that was it. Down went Kawi. The doctor, Frank B. Doggett, checking him out. Seems to be okay. Now we now fall into 28, 5, and 1. 34 years of age. Could not come back and become the third man to regain the cruiserweight title. As Evander Holyfield was simply too much for Kawi. We'll get the official announcement from Ed Durian. Ladies and gentlemen, the time of this bout, two minutes and 30 seconds of the fourth round, and the winner by a knockout, and still the International Boxing Federation Cruiserweight Champion, Evander Real Deal Holyfield. Holyfield, and have a nice round of applause for Dwight Muhammad Kawi. Let's hear it for him. Maestro, please. So Evander Holyfield knocks out White Muhammad Kawi, two minutes and 30 seconds of the fourth round. And you have to wonder where this will lead to for 34-year-old White Muhammad Kawi. Nothing but greatness in front of Evander Holyfield, who is standing by right now. He is getting ready to check out Ferdy Pacheco. Trying to get Kawi and Holyfield to do some talking with Ferdy. Kawi. Well, you have to wonder what's going through his mind right now. His fifth defeat, Johnny Davis, Michael Spinks, and two times now to Evander Holyfield. Holyfield is with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. First of all, congratulations on a spectacular win. Did you think you could get him that early? First of all, I just thank the Lord, God Almighty, for having the strength that I came into the fight. But um, um, I, was, I was expecting a tough fight, and I I didn't come in uh, anticipation knocking my Earl or anything, but, you know, I was ready to, uh, to count on his mistakes. Let's talk about the first round as we speak. We'll be able to see it on television. What was the first knockdown? What did you hit him with? He looked like he was off balance. You know, I, I hit him with a left hook on top of the head, and I... Uh, I sent his neck went when I hit him with a, a nice left hook. I was, you know, my balance was together and I threw a nice left hook. Then, you, then you went with a, with a lot of professional uh, uh, smoothness right for the kill in the second uh, and the final knockdown. You, did you sense that he was really in trouble? Did you feel like you could finish or did you think this was like a flash knockdown? You better be careful. Well, I, I, I figured it was just a flash knockdown. And my main thing was not to uh, rush myself because I knew uh, Carway's good with the overhand punches, so I stuck to my jab, and uh, the punch that I knocked him down with, I tried to uh, really set it back up with the jab. 
Did you find him greatly diminished in skill from the first time you fought him a year and a half ago? Do you think he's gone downhill a little bit, or do you think uh, it's the same Kawi that you fought uh, a year and a half ago? Well, actually, uh, I think he came in hungry and came out with me. I think uh, with my coach, Lou Duvin, George Ben, and my conditioning coach, Tim Hartman, the conditioning and, uh, and uh, the different skills that I brought into the fight made me a different fighter. Well, now, of course, the thing on everybody's mind and everybody's conversation here with Tyson at ringside watching you, everybody's been saying there's nobody down the road but you for Tyson about a year down the road as you develop into heavyweight. How, how do you think uh, you impress Tyson? You think he's ready to get in with you now? You think he wants to see you as a heavyweight? Well, I think uh, Tyson, uh, I think he respects me. I respect him. Tyson's good, and I figure I'm good. And uh, when my progress, when my... When it's time for me to move up, I will be ready. I just need an ample amount of time to uh, get my condition together, get my weight properly, and a little more schooling from my, my coaches. Well, congratulations on a brilliant win.